Hi, welcome to this new webinar of the new NHPC standards for 2024. Introducing Chapter 4.6 titled Engineered Film. I'm Andy Clark and I'm a Geotechnical Engineer in NHPC's Land Quality Service and I'm going to spend a wee bit of time running through this new chapter. This webinar will discuss why the new chapter in Engineered Film was needed, how it was developed, what it covers, how it's going to be implemented, alongside an overview of each part of the chapter to indicate our requirements and good practice for earthworks on house building sites going forward. Chapter 4.6 was needed to address a clear gap in our standards and to formalise our requirements for all the hard work done in sites before pouring a house foundation. There was a long-standing in-house feeling of a need to provide guidance and consistency to the industry and to improve our own internal risk management processes for sites where earthworks were involved. The quality of documentation we receive covers a very broad spectrum, sometimes exceptional in its understanding of proposed sites and the intent to de-risk, improve and landform and prepare the site, but sadly sometimes submissions and designs show limited or no understanding of geotechnics. Sometimes risks are dismissed or inadequately mitigated against. We wanted to take the best parts of what we see, detail our requirements and what we need to see alongside offering guidance, gestures and nods of good practice and provide these within our new chapter. Earthworks specifications, designs and other front-end remedial strategy documentation can be incomplete or sometimes not followed on site as intended. What we do like to see is a clear alignment between understanding of the proposed site, the required improvement measures, the earthworks taking place and the intended building foundation essentially joining the dots from inception to completion with a clear strategy running through the works. Similarly, back-end verification reports can be incomplete, be overly brief in its content and comprise only appended test results with little or no interpretation in engineering detail. Therefore, Chapter 4.6 was implemented to address these issues and give a benchmark of what we expect to see with the ultimate aim of improving the standards of earthworks in the house building industry and importantly, reduce the risk of future claims and disruption to the homeowner. This chapter was co-authored by the small team of geotechnical engineers working in NHBC's Land Quality Service, who collectively have a long background in earthworks from multiple engineering sectors, including the house building industry. NHBC made a concerted effort to bring an industry a work in a positive, collaborative approach in its production. Chapter 4.6 on engineered fill is really nothing new or expansive to practice in geotechnical engineers, but confirms and builds on what we already presently understood. This chapter was reviewed through several drafts, meetings and continued liaison by a steering committee consisting of NHBC engineers from across the wider company, alongside a wide range of interested external parties, such as consultants, contractors, and house builder customers. This chapter underwent a number of revisions, resulting in broad agreement on its content and buy-in across the steering committee. We are very grateful and thankful for everybody's input, the time spent, and the purposeful contributions made. Chapter 4.6 is not just discussing engineered fill, it provides a performance standards and guidance where engineered fill supports low rise residential structures, external works and infrastructure, and cons considers how the fill will interact with the proposed end use of the development. To bring this point home once more, for experienced geotechnical engineers, chapter 4.6 is saying nothing new at all. It should be business as usual. The guidance aims to ensure ground investigation is appropriate to the proposed development, the site conditions and nature of the filling, G-technical ground models are sufficiently developed to be appropriate for the proposed development and underlying conditions. Engineered fill is placed to a suitable earthwork specification appropriate to the end use of the site in residential development. Sufficient G-technical testing is undertaken to prove that the required performance of the earthworks has been successfully achieved. And finally, that sufficient reporting is provided with the necessary engineering interpretation included for us to be satisfied that the work's undertaken and that the site left ready for house building and foundation solution is suitable for build mark warranty. Given the vast amount of variance and decision making along the way in creating a development platform suitable for housing, Chapter 4.6 simply cannot cover all eventualities and scenarios. 
We are not trying to tell industry how to do earthworks. That is something that most organisations already know and are implementing well. But we do hope that this chapter offers clear guidance on our technical requirements that must be met, as well as details of good practice. There are many adopted techniques and approaches that will require guidance from other sources and or early engagement with NHPC through services such as the Land Quality Service. Some topics not covered within Chapter 4.6 are backfilling to retaining walls, capping and sub bases to roads, soil stabilisation or soil mixing, piling mats, fills providing mitigation against the presence of contamination and reinforcing geograds. The new chapter will be effective from the 1st of January 2024. However, please don't panic. We know that earthworks in all forms will have just been completed, are ongoing or have already been planned for next year. Therefore, we know that transitional arrangements are very much needed and we will be taking the following approach to assessing sites. For completed tenders signed before the 1st of January 2024, ongoing earthworks or those already completed that from the 1st of January 2024, all earthworks required to support new house foundations will be assessed against the new chapter's performance standards on a site-by-site -site basis. Assessment will be based on demonstrating compliance with the performance standards on this new chapter, whilst acknowledging that guidance may not strictly be all met on all fronts. All new house foundations supported in earthworks starting after the 1st of January 2025 will be expected to fully comply with the requirements of this new chapter and that both performance standards and guidance are met. NHBC will closely monitor the situation and welcome industry feedback. Further, further information will be provided if significant issues arise. Chapter 4.6 is no different from other parts of the NHBC standard chapters and uses our standardised structure that hopefully most of you are familiar with. The NHBC technical requirements are detailed in Chapter 2.1 of our standards and thus these must be met by the builder. The performance requirements or standards are clauses in bold with a shadow. These support the technical requirements and must be complied with and where the performance standards are followed, the technical requirements for that particular item of work will be met. Alternative standards of performance will be acceptable only if, in the opinion of NHBC, the technical requirements for that particular item of work are met and that the standard achieves is not lower than those stated in the performance standards. Thereafter, and what follows next is guidance in black text stating how the performance standard may be met. NHBC may consider other ways to meet the specification performance requirements, but this would be subject to consult consultation with us before any, any implementation on site, prior to be accepted as a suitable alternative for our bill mark warranty. This new chapter is somewhat lengthy, running to 28 pages and includes a lot of information and guidance to assist with producing good quality earthworks for house building. It is worth noting that this chapter includes several definitions at the beginning, which define terms that I'll use later on. It's important to note that these definitions are contextual to how NHBC has interpreted them in terms of this chapter and may not strictly be true technical definitions, but ultimately hope they assist wider understanding. Figure one is included to assist in navigating through this chapter and outlines how a proposed site or a site where historical earthworks have taken place fit within chapter 4.6 and its application within this area of the standards. Are earthworks intended to support proposed development? Has the intended site alongside its ground and groundwater conditions and associated risks been adequately assessed? Do any improvement, mitigation measures or further assessment need to be done before earthworks and land forming takes place? This could be treatment of coal seams, removal of remnant foundations and obstructions, preloading of the site and or settlement monitoring of self weight settlements, all very specific and tailored to the site itself. Has historical fill been placed across the site that needs further assessment and can it be defined in terms of its suitability or is it all newly proposed fill read, readily specified and understood with clear proposals and intent? If the answer to the above is generally a no, then you're sitting outside Chapter 4.6, not really aligning with our performance standards and very unlikely to acquire Billmark warranty without prior consultation.
In these cases, come and talk to NHBC through, for example, the Land Quality Service if you're unsure where to go with a site. If the answers are more of a yes, and we would hope that this covers the vast majority of sites that are going to be or are registered with NHBC, then you're working within the envelope of Chapter 4.6. With good front-end strategies, proposals and specifications to back-end verification reporting demonstrating how well the site works went and suitability of the finished development platform against recommended house foundations. We are aware that sometimes get, getting a site ready for houses is a staged approach with many people and organisations involved so we all need to know when others are taking on what's and what these entail. For any site that does not fit within the flow chart in Chapter 4.6 we would recommend L engagement with NHBC. What follows in the remainder of this webinar presentation is a greater look at each section of the new chapter. Clause 461 details how engineered fill complies with NHBC technical requirements to provide adequate support for building foundations and surrounding works. Again, this is a technical requirement and this must be met. Engineered fill shall comply with NHBC technical requirements and provide adequate support to building foundations and surrounding works. Now, just to touch on this, and I'm a little biased, but earthworks are a critical element in house building, sometimes often overlooked, but with some fantastic work being done behind the scenes. We want to ensure that suitably qualified people are the ones designing and implementing the earthworks and associated site works to create these development platforms fit for residential development with minimal ongoing risk to the homeowner. To this end, the chapter details the required people undertaking the works and also lists relevant guidance and standards which should be consulted during the design process. For more, more highly complex projects, come and see us at NHBC and the Land Quality Service team who can work with you more closely on these challenging sites that may arise. Clause 462 requires earthworks designs and specifications shall be produced in a clearly understandable format, including all relevant information and shall be distributed to all appropriate parties. We want to know about sites and the proposed strategies before the start, and we require earthworks strategy documentation eight weeks ahead of the works. The G technical design and specification should be fully complete and compliant with Chapter 4.6 at this stage. We want all stakeholders to be aware of planned works and the processes to be employed prior to a machine touching the ground. Key documents we require are listed in Chapter 462 and include death study reports, ground investigation reports, material acceptability assessments, G-technical design reports or a G-technical design statement, earthworks specification and earthworks verification reports. Some of these reports and documents may appear to be new but are really not. They form part of a timeline of reporting that is standard affair and aligns more with the reporting requirements of Eurocode 7. It is, key that doc it is key that the documentation submitted included the proposed end use of the earthworks and what is trying to be achieved. We no longer want to be assessing the suitability of works that have already occurred in a, re in a retrospective assessment. Now, Clause 463 in reality is a nod to our requirements and guidance within the existing standards with regard to hazardous sites and ground hazards and that the placement of engineered fill on hazardous sites shall be reported to NHBC before work on site commences and shall be specified to take account of any ground hazards. We require to be notified at least eight weeks before starting to fill on hazardous sites. For further guidance on what we consider to be hazardous, see NHBC Chapter 4.1 Land Quality Managing Ground Conditions and Chapter 4.2 Building Near Trees. We expect any risk from a hazard to be identified and characterised within the death study report and ground investigation report and to be suitably mitigated and designed for in the G-Technical Design Report in supporting earthworks specification for the works. Similar to the previous clause, Clause 464 requires the front-end reporting to determine the scope of future works. A death study and ground investigation shall be undertaken and the finding used to inform the design of the filling and earthwork specification. The death study and ground investigation report should full, fully characterise the site, identify all relevant features and any potential geotechnical and environmental constraints to the development, specifically considering the role that earthworks will have in the development of the site. Items to be determined could be known areas of made ground, 
the strength, density, compressibility and stability of soils beneath the proposed earthworks and the potential reuse of existing soil for fill earthworks. The presence of any slopes, embankments, cutting, quarry high walls, buried batters or buried services, culverts, tunnels or remnant foundations and obstructions. We require a death study report and ground investigation report to be used to inform the design of the filling, which should be detailed within the geotechnical design report or statement and support an earthwork specification. This design process, the engineering assessments and specifications are nothing new, but we, asking, we are asking for greater emphasis on reporting to Eurocode 7, with the addition of a geotechnical design report to support the earthwork specification. For example, if existing soils are to be reused and recompacted, we, we would expect testing to confirm the suitability of their use in the planned earthworks. This would be addressed in a material acceptability assessment that NHBC would expect to see contained within the GTEC Geotechnical Design Report. Understanding the proposed site is key. Clause 465 asks that the ground to be filled over shall be suit suitably stable and appropriate for the proposed earthworks and end use. Sites should be well understood prior to starting work, which includes a stability assessment of the underlying ground. You could build fantastic engineered fill and landform a finished development platform, but if it's sitting on a bowl of jelly, so to speak, it is likely to be unacceptable for house building. As such, there may be significant work and assessment needed before placing any engineered fill. This section of the chapter provides guidance as to the engineering issues to be addressed from subsurface features like mining, to man-made obstructions and remnant foundations or problematic soft soils. We require that all residual issues in the underlying ground are fully understood and are mitigated such that they do not adversely affect the completed development platform. For example, if soft or compressible soils are, are to be left below development platform, the resulting settlement induced from the overlying fill should be accurately calculated, confirmed by observed readings following landforming and remediation, and then suitably mitigated for in the design of foundations and site infrastructure. The vast majority of NHBC sites or developer sites that may become NHBC registered try and use what is available on site to minimise import material when creating a development platform. However, there is also often the need to import material onto a site for earthworks as well. Clause 466 asks that engineered fill materials shall be suitable for the site conditions, proposed end use and techniques of placement and compaction. Issues to be taken into account include suitable sources of engineered fill materials and treatment of fill materials as well. Both site one and import sources of fill need prior assessment and classification to confirm their suitability before being placed. Materials may be suitable in their existing state or may require treatment prior to filling. This section of the chapter gives some guidance as to the types of treatment which may be appropriate. We do allow soil modification with a normal amount of lime and cement for moisture control purposes. However, at present, we do not allow stabilisation of soils for the support of building foundations. There is further discussion on this subject contained in a new chapter and what we define as modification or stabilisation is included in the definitions at the start of this chapter. There is a table included in clause 466, table 3, that provides different examples of the acceptability of materials for reuse and engineered fill. It includes suitable sources that are accepted, for example, natural sands and gravels, hazardous material that may require further testing and demonstration that they are suitable, reactive materials as an example, Legacy, man-made or natural sources that are of a greater concern and that require a prior agreement before use. This could be colliery shale or steel slags. And finally, fill materials and their constituents considered unacceptable, including material containing harmful, harmful substances posing a risk to human health and environment. The builder is required to demonstrate to NHBC how the source material is suitable through testing, interpretation and reporting. We consider well-presented geotechnical plots or graphs are required to enhance the understanding of suitability far better than, for example, discussion only or min, mean, max summary tables. Clause 467 details our requirements for the design and specification of the earthworks. It asks that a suitably qualified engineer 
shall be responsible for the design and specification of earthworks, taking into account future development and type of building foundations. Engineered fill shall be placed in accordance with a suitable earthwork specification. Generally, we require the right people to be responsible for the investigation, design and specification of the planned works, to produce a suitable development platform with appropriate building foundations that are acceptable to NHPC. And we're looking for earthworks to be compliant with Eurocode 7. Most NHBC sites sit under G-Technical Category 2, conventional, with no exceptional risks during or after construction. They would contain some or many G-Technical hazards to address, possibly accompanied by some prep works and or ground improvement works. The engineered fill would be placed for both the support of building foundations and all infrastructure in external areas. Therefore, as previously discussed, we are introducing the need to submit a G-Technical design report for the majority of NHPC sites or developer sites that may become NHPC registered. This may be unfamiliar in a new title and report, but they should cover nothing new in terms of what already has been done ahead of earthworks taking place. Cross-referencing the ground investigation reports, demonstrating material acceptability of source materials, providing design packages for the various elements, ground improvement works, prep works, the planned earthworks themselves and land forming, leading up to foundation recommendations, all in one comprehensive report. A geotechnical design report should include all identified geotechnical risks, detailed, and all mitigation measures, and allow for the production of a project-specific earthwork specification to be developed for implementation on site. Its content are detailed in Clause 467, but defines material properties and what manner the proposed fill materials to be placed and its acceptance criteria. G-Technical Category 3, complex, where exceptional G-Technical risks and where unstable ground conditions are present, require a third party check and sit outside the scope of Chapter 4.6. Further consultation with NHPC and the Land Quality Service team is required. The types and specification for earthworks used shall be based on site-specific G-Technical characteristics and the proposed end use. Specifications that are acceptable to NHPC are Method specification These are earthworks followed a defined process, usually utilising the specification for highway works to produce a general quality of engineered fill. We do not consider a method specification suitable for the support of building foundations themselves, but may be suitable elsewhere in the development. End product specifications include a defined degree of compaction linked to the geotechnical properties of the place fill. The degree of compaction is regularly tested throughout the earthworks to confirm compliance with the specification. End product specifications generally produce a higher quality of fill due to, due to the increased, increased testing requirements and we consider that they may be suitable for the support of building foundations. Performance specifications add a defined performance requirement to the completed fill relative to long-term project requirements. For example, the, beha the behaviour of long-term settlement under a specific load may be defined in the earthworks specification as a compliance criteria, which will have to be proven upon completion of the works themselves. NHPC considers performance specifications may be suitable for the support of building foundations, but only when used in conjunction with end product specifications. While it happens on most projects, it really is essential to ensure via the G-Technical Design Report and supporting earthwork specification that the underlying risk on a site, the quality of the placed earthworks and the proposed building foundations are fully aligned. Tables 6 and 7 are included in clause 467 to give guidance as to the types of specifications that we would consider suitable for various scenarios and the levels of compaction which should be achieved. We require that relative compaction compliance is higher where earthworks are supporting building foundations in comparison to external areas or other infrastructure. The additional requirement of a performance specification where reinforced strip foundations or beam grillage foundations are being proposed is also detailed. Any requirements, decisions and ultimately NHBC acceptance of the earthworks will depend on the intended or proposed foundation type. Therefore, it is essential that the appropriate specification is de de developed for the foundation in mind. Clause 468 states that placed engineered fill shall support foundations, infrastructure and external works as required and without excessive settlement. For foundations bearing dire directly onto engineered fill, NHBC will only accept reinforced strip foundations, 
Beam Grillage Foundations and RAF Foundations on the premise that it has been placed and verified to an appropriate specification as previously discussed. Unreinforced strip foundations bearing onto engineered fill will not be accepted under any circumstances. Table 8 within clause 468 indicates the types of building foundations that may be suitable to NHPC for Bullmark warranty on the basis of being able to demonstrate the satisfactory performance of the placed engineered fill and that no other residual geotechnical risks are present. The table should only be used as an aid and should not be used to justify a less robust foundation solution where a clear geotechnical risk still remains outside the placed fill and that significant residual risk of long-term creep settlements is evident. Table 8 also introduces the role and quality of site works being implemented, the level and quality of supervision during the works, the type of contractor undertaking the works, and how this is reflected in the quality of the verification reporting. Ultimately, foundations must be designed on a site-by-site -site basis, considering all the appropriate geotechnical risks, including the design and placement of the engineered fill itself. But we are also asking for proposed foundations to have some additional requirements or reinforcement provision, and these are included in Table 8. semi raft foundations to be designed in accordance with Chapter 4.4 of our standards. Beam grillage foundations designed for moments to span 3 metre, simply supported, and 1.5 metre as a cantilever. And strip foundations designed for moments to span two metres, simply supported, and one and a half metre as a cantilever. If all conditions in the table are met, then NHBC will generally accept the indicated foundation solution subject to satisfactory detailed design and submission ahead of house construction. Conversely, where all the conditions in the table are not being met, we would expect the engineer to propose a more robust foundation as well. As for other chapters in our standards, shallow depth foundations on engineered fill should only settle 25mm with a maximal allowable tilt of 1 in 400. However, if site-wide settlement is ongoing, but of minimal magnitude, additional total settlement may be acceptable to NHBC should a suitably robust foundation be specified and service serviceability requirements can be accommodated for. Conversely, the presence of high wall features would require rigorous investigation and assessment, including their location, geometry and load settlement behaviour following the placement of engineered fill, for them to be considered suitable to build residential development upon. Where buildings are on pile foundations, differential settlement between the houses and external areas should be carefully considered in the design of any services and thresholds. Clause 469 requires that earthwork filling shall only be undertaken using methods acceptable to NHBC that are appropriate to the materials, site conditions and end use. Filling should be generally undertaken by conventional compaction plant in separate layers of a designated thickness. We consider conventional methods of compaction to be those listed in the specification for highway works, table 64, and for example, smooth or pad foot vibratory rollers. It is important that the chosen method is compatible with the materials due to be compacted, and trials are recommended at the beginning of the work to ensure the specification is achieved. We do allow non-conventional methods such as dynamic compaction, rapid impact compaction and high energy impact compaction to be utilised subject to demonstration of their suitability, including method of placement and level of verification testing, which may include post-remediation post load settlement performance testing. This should be detailed in the G-Technical Design Report and support and earthwork specification. Again, NHBC requires at least eight weeks notification before starting work where these, where these alternative methods are being proposed. Surcharging is also an acceptable method of ground improvement. However, it should not be used as a compaction technique in place of the methods previously discussed. When it is used, we require careful design backed up by sufficient monitoring or trials to, come the to confirm the effectiveness of the surcharge. The results of any trials or monitoring and interpretation by the engineer should be included in the Earthworks Verification Report. Clause 4610 gives requirements and best practices for site work in that the developer or builder shall ensure suitable supervision and that sampling and testing are performed throughout the entire duration of the earthworks, filling shall be undertaken by a competent contractor using materials, personnel and plant appropriate for the nature of the site conditions and proposed dangers.
The developer or builder is required to provide supervision for the earthworks to ensure compliance with the specification. The independence, timing and subsequent level of record keeping should all be based on the duration and complexity of the earthworks and the requirements should be fully detailed in the earthworks specification. The formation should be prepared by removing topsoil, vegetation and any unsuitable materials. Relic structures, obstructions and boulders greater than one metre in size should be removed or recorded as a potential obstruction for future consideration and be detailed in the Earthworks Verification Report. The formation should be then proof rolled and any soft spots remediated in accordance with the specification. Where important for follow-on processes, such as piling, an accurate survey of the formation should be undertaken prior to starting works. This section of the chapter also gives guidance such as how to tie in earthworks to sloping ground to ensure that differential settlements below properties are minimised. Clause 4.6.10 also gives guidance as to how the fill material should be handled to ensure that its quality is maintained. It should be regularly checked for consistency and only used in appropriate weather conditions. Engineered fill must be placed and compacted in accordance with the specification within a defined moisture content range close to the optimal moisture content as derived from relevant laboratory testing. For cohesive fill materials, the moisture content is critical in achieving the desired dry density. Engineered fill that is compacted too dry of the optimum moisture content risks being vulnerable to collapse settlement or heave when wet. Engineered fill that is compacted too wet of optimal moisture content risks being too weak to provide adequate support without excessive settlement. Guidance is also provided on how the material should be handled and filled to prevent risk to external areas of the works. For example, ensuring stockpiles do not induce settlement of any existing buildings adjacent to the works. All testing through the works should be undertaken to a recognised standard. Any laboratory undertaken tests should be UCAS or MCERTs accredited. Where non-compliances are identified through the testing, they should be remediated following the requirements of the earthwork specification. This may include drying of engineered fill prior to further placement of subsequent layers, excavation and replacement of the engineered fill represented by the test failure, additional compaction if the failure is shallow or at the surface, and retesting or undertaking appropriate for per performance testing. If remediation cannot be undertaken, the non-conforming area should be accurately identified and clearly detailed within the Earthworks Verification Report for future consideration. We would expect that the engineer to be fully aware of the non-compliant fill when specifying foundations in that particular area of the site, and more robust foundations may be necessary. Any completed areas of fill should be protected from deterioration due to trafficking, poor weather, or pooling, pooling surface water. A range of measures may be implemented to mitigate these risks, but where compacting material has been deteriorated, it should be remediated in accordance with the earthwork specification. Clause 4611 asks that the builder shall ensure that foundations with an engineered fill are not disturbed by adjacent excavations. In that regard, any excavations made into engineered fill following completion must maintain the integrity of any adjacent buildings. No excavation should extend below a 45 degree angle from the base of the foundation as shown in the diagram. This is especially important when planning routes or follow-on services such as drainage. Any areas identified during the earthworks that are unsuitable for excavations, for example due to buried obstructions left below the fill, should be highlighted on a drawing within the earthworks verification report. Obviously, an important part of placing engineered fill is in its reporting and verification. Clause 4612 asks that the verification testing of engineered fill shall be undertaken to confirm compliance with the earthworks specification and its fitness for purpose. Testing is to be undertaken on a combination of regular targeted locations such as a standardised grid and more discrete locations alongside higher risk locations such as deep fill or where more substantial buildings are being proposed. Clause 4612 requires verification testing to confirm that any earthworks are compliant with the specification and fit for their intended end use. In doing so, it should take into account the fill classification, this is testing including particle size distribution or gradings, plasticity or Attenberg limits, compaction tests or moisture content tests undertaken throughout the earthworks to confirm that the engineered fill material remains within the acceptability limit set or envelope within the earthworks specification.
Acceptable test methods and frequencies of classification tests are given in Tables 9 and 10 of BS 6031-2009 Code of Practice for Earthworks. End product testing, this is full compaction most commonly established by comparing the in situ dry densities and moisture contents against the laboratory determined maximum dry density and optimum moisture content. Engineered fill may be measured using sand replacement tests, nuclear density tests or electromagnetic density gauges. Performing testing, Table 9 included within Clause 46612 provides different types of performance testing and typical applications for their use. One of the more common is a zone load test used to assess load settlement behaviour of the finished development platform. Observed readings should confirm previous settlement calculations and allow an assessment to be made of displacements within the newly placed fill, future building loading and any secondary creep settlement where expected. The extent and type of verification testing are dependent on the specification used and the proposed foundation types to be built. All verification requirements should be detailed within the earthwork specification. Clause 4612 gives guidance on the types of suitable performance testing techniques and the likely application. Also gives guidance on the number of verification tests that should be undertaken for end product testing as shown in Table 10. NHBC understands there are many, many variables when it comes to testing frequencies for classification testing, compliance testing and performance testing and notes that these are based on scale, complexity and variability of ground conditions lead, leading up to the preferred foundation solution. Stating the minimum testing frequencies and their acceptance criteria within the geotechnical design report and supporting earthwork specification will assist NHBC with being on board with strategies and proposals from the outset. Clause 4613 asks that a detailed earthworks verification report shall be provided to NHBC on completion of the earthworks filling and testing. Where appropriate, the content shall be agreed with NHBC prior to the work being done. The earthworks verification report should be submitted to NHBC as soon as possible and ahead of house foundations being poured. The report can cover the whole site or be part of a phased approach so, so long as each phase is clearly defined. The report can be prepared by a third party supervising engineer or a competent earthworks contractor, depending on the proposed end use and foundations being selected for development. Clause 4613 advises as to the expected contents of the report, but the required information should be clearly defined in the earthworks specification. Further guidance can be found in external documents such as the DMRB document CD622, Managing Geotechnical Risks, where it's referred to as a geotechnical feedback report. The report should give a clear and detailed account of the works that have been undertaken and any works that are still required going into the house building phase. The content should include, but not limited to, the company's specifications, methods and fill materials involved, as built survey records, records of progress and any changes from the specification, test results and certificates, evidence that the works comply with the earthworks specification and are suitable for the proposed foundation types where applicable, information for the builder, for example drawings of remaining obstruction and remnant foundations, foundation zoning plans including assessments, all test results must be interpreted by a suitably qualified person confirming compliance with the earthworks specification has been met and that the earthworks are suitable for the proposed end use including foundation recommendations. The Earthworks Verification Report must be presented clearly and concisely. All test results should be compiled into an easy to understand table or graph. We are asking for more clarity regarding assessment, interpretation and recommendations obtained from the raw test data available. We are no longer accepting raw, uninterpreted test data included as PDF appendices. We are asking for the project to demonstrate how well it has achieved its aims. Figure 7 is included in Clause 4613 <clears throat> as an example of good practice when displaying compaction data with an earthworks verification report. The results are displayed with the relevant compaction criteria highlighted on the graph. Accompanying the data should be a discussion on the results from the engineer confirming how they compare with the requirements of the agreed earthworks specification. Any non-compliance should be highlighted and discussed with details of what remedial works have been undertaken or how the non-compliant material will be affect the proposed end use of the fill. 
Copies of our technical standards are freely available to our builder customers via our website, with printed copies available at an additional cost. Thank you for listening to me. I hope Chapter 4.6 on Engineered Fill helps you with your projects going forwards. Further information on the chapter itself can be found on our website. Thanks.